Hello. Great to see you again. Today, we're going to dive a little deeper into coloring, adding shadows, and highlights. If you've already watched my first three beginner-friendly videos, this one will make perfect sense. I'll walk you through it in my usual easy-to-follow style, if you've followed along so far, you've got this. Let's jump in. Start by sketching your outline using the pencil tool. Make sure your lines connect as much as possible, this helps a lot with coloring later on. As always, I'm sticking with designer persona, because I like working in vector, it makes changing colors much easier than in pixel mode. Here's what I do. After I finish sketching, I select all the stroke lines, expand the strokes, and use add boolean to combine everything into a single shape. Alright, now that we've got our vector shapes, here's the first method to add color. Use the vector flood fill tool. This tool works best on shapes that are fully closed. If your lines don't connect properly, it might not fill the area correctly, so double check that before using it. The second method is to draw the shape you want inside another object, then click insert inside selection. For example, if you draw a shadow or detail inside the bear's face, it'll automatically stay clipped within that face shape. If you've used Illustrator before, this is similar to the draw inside function, and we'll be using this a lot. Now let's add some shadows. Select the bear's face again and click insert inside selection. Draw the shadow inside and darken the color slightly. Move this layer to the bottom. You can keep adding more shadow shapes inside until you select a new object. If your object isn't a single shape yet, just repeat the earlier steps. If you accidentally draw on the wrong shape, you can just drag that object in the layers panel into the correct shape. Another option is to use the brush tool or pencil to draw strokes and fill the area manually. In Designer Persona, using brushes can be a little harder to control, so I usually stick with the pencil tool. Just increase the stroke size a bit, then draw in your shadows. Texture brushes can't be expanded. Only basic brushes support expand stroke. You can shade using the pencil tool by drawing over the area. When you're done, select all the shadow strokes, go to the layer menu, choose expand stroke, and again, use add boolean to merge everything into a single shape. Personally, I like drawing with the pencil. It's just easier. Then in the layers panel, I usually change the blending mode of the shadow group to multiply. This makes it easier to adjust the character's skin tone later without needing to repaint the shadows. Bonus tip, you don't have to hit insert inside every time. Just Ctrl plus click directly on the object in the canvas, and keep drawing inside it. That saves you an extra step and speeds things up. You can also group your shadow shapes together, set the whole group to multiply, and draw everything inside that group. Same result, just a different workflow. And that's the main vector-based workflow I use. You can also apply effects like Gaussian Blur, or tweak the Multiply mode depending on how intense you want the shadow to be.
Instead of pure color, I usually use a soft orange or brown tone for a warmer look. Another great trick is using copy style. Once you've set up the blending mode, FX, or shadow color you like, just go to the edit menu, click copy style, then paste style onto other shapes to apply it instantly. You can also select multiple object shapes and paste the style to all of them at once. There are still lots of little tricks that can help speed up your workflow. I'll keep sharing them with you as we go. Since you've made it all the way to video number 4, looks like you're really getting into this program. And yeah, it might seem like I'm really rooting for Affinity, and I am. But just so you know, they're not sponsoring me or anything. So if anyone from the Affinity team is watching, feel free to sponsor me. I'd really appreciate it. For highlights, you can follow the exact same process, just switch the blending mode to overlay instead of multiply. Multiply and overlay are great for flexible color editing. If you're working with clients, this lets you make color changes quickly without repainting anything. But if you're just drawing for fun, you can totally use solid colors instead of blending modes. Let's quickly recap the vector methods. After sketching, you can use the Vector Flood Fill tool, works best with closed shapes. You can click to fill the color into a closed area, or just click directly on the stroke. Use the Gradient and Transparency tools to help with your work. You can fill open areas manually using vector brushes or the pencil, expand the strokes, and merge with Boolean. I actually cover this technique quite a bit in my videos in the channel. Use the fill hole command in the layer menu to fill small gaps after expanding strokes. Now, since Affinity Designer supports both vector and raster in the same app, let's switch to Pixel Persona and see how to shade there. First, select the bear's face, then switch to Pixel Persona. Choose a brush and start painting shadows directly. You'll notice Designer automatically creates a new pixel layer clip to the face, kind of like doing a clipping mask for you. But if you didn't select any shape first, it'll still create a pixel layer. It just won't be clipped. No problem. Just drag the pixel layer onto the shape in the layers panel, and it'll behave like a clipping mask. This is why keeping separate layers for things like the face, body, and clothes can really help when shading this way. You'll also see that the context toolbar changes depending on the tool you're using. Try exploring settings like Wet Edges, Protect Alpha, and different blend modes. They're super useful, depending on your brush and style. Most of the tools in Pixel Persona work pretty much like Photoshop, even the shortcuts and how things behave. So if you're already familiar with Photoshop, you'll feel right at home using this too. And that's it for this video. It's not too tricky. Especially if you're coming from Illustrator. The tools and concepts are really similar. This is actually the fourth video in this series. And if you've followed all four, I think you now have a solid understanding of how to draw and work in Affinity Designer. Even though I've focused mostly on character drawing, you can totally use these same methods for logos, typography, or other kinds of design projects too. If you're a beginner, these four videos should be more than enough to get you started. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.